lot of private messages from people asking me what type of equipment I use to film my videos and what do I recommend for people that want to get into filming YouTube videos. Filming can be done on any smartphone nowadays. The newer the smartphone, the better quality the camera, so the better quality the video. And you have to take into consideration the audio. A lot of the phones don't have the best audio, but it's doable. There are a few accessories you can get that are relatively inexpensive that will make not only your video quality better, but also your audio quality. And I'm going to discuss those today and what I use. Right now, I'm filming on my iPhone 6S Plus with 128 gigabytes of memory. Now, I have video cameras that are professional quality or what they call prosumer uh, quality. I don't need really high dollar video cameras for what I do, but I have video cameras that shoot up to 1080p. YouTube will only broadcast in up to 1080p. So one of the things that people need to understand is you want to shoot in the highest resolution that you can because when you edit your video, it gets compressed. It loses quality the more you edit it. That's kind of hard to explain all the technical terms, but for the layman, what it means is if you shoot in 1080p and it you post it in 1080p on YouTube, it gets compressed down and shows at about a 720p for the viewers. So if you shoot at 4K quality and you edit it down, and it gets compressed, then it will show at 1080p. And 1080p is the highest resolution right now that YouTube broadcasts their videos on the free side. They do show it in higher quality on the paid side if you get to paid YouTube. But for the free, 1080p is the highest it goes right now. I don't film in, t in 4K, which my phone can do. And the reason I don't is a 4K takes up a lot of memory, not only on the phone, but in my computer when I'm editing. And I don't need to shoot at that high of a resolution because most people are only going to see it at 1080p anyways. You could be watching on your smart TV and watching in 4K, but like I said, YouTube is only broadcasting at 1080p, so it's really a moot point. A phone with 1080p quality is good enough. Get the highest amount of gigabytes of storage you can get that you can afford. I have 128 gigabyte. I actually bought this phone off of eBay. It's a refurbished, it's a factory certified refurbished phone. And I only paid a little over $300 for it. So it was a that was a really good price for this phone. And it does everything that I need it to do. Now the new iPhones, the 7, the 8, and the 10, do have better resolution cameras and better quality. And you can shoot up to 240 frames a second which is really super slow motion, 120 is slow motion. Then you get into 60, which is what you see on like Netflix and things of that nature. What I edit my videos in is 24 frames, which is a what they consider a cinema format for cinema, like what you see in the cinemas, uh, you know, big screen movies. So with that all said, let me show you some of the accessories that I use for my iPhone. Now, the first one I'm gonna show you, this is a little fob and what this does is this starts and stops my recording. And I can also use it to snap photos from my phone. So if I have my phone set up on a tripod like I do right now, if I push this button, it'll stop the video. If I push it again, it'll start the video. So if I'm trying to get something uh, that I want to frame up and I want to leave it on a tripod and film it, then I just use this little key fob and I can do that quite easily. The next thing I have is my action camera. Now, this isn't a GoPro. It's a GoPro knockoff. This is the Campark Extreme One Plus UHD 4K action camera. Uh, it has a 170 degree lens, so it sees very wide angle. Uh, 180 degrees is would be like east-west or north-south. So this is 170, so this is just shy 10 degrees shy of shooting a complete 180 degrees flat out from both sides. So it is a very wide angle lens. It does have a little LED light that you can control to turn on or off if you want. Uh, it works as a flash if you're taking pictures. It works as a, a little video light if you want to illuminate 
something in low light or the dark. I like this camera because it's only $55. I can have four of them for a little over $200. And I can put them outside to film time lapses or whatever I want to do. And I don't have to worry about losing a $400 GoPro or getting damaged compared to $55. It has a slot here for the SD card, and the SD card is what it records on it. This is a 32 gigabyte. I find that I don't need any more than 32 gigabytes. I carry extras with me, so I always have them in my pocket. But 32 gigs, that's a lot of video footage, even at 1080p. Uh, it wouldn't be that much at 4K because 4K takes up a, a huge amount of memory. But 32 gigs is perfect for me. It, uh, you know, If I fill it up, I can pop another one in and film. If I had more than 32 gigabytes of footage, it would take a long time to search through it for editing and finding the, the shots that I want, deleting the ones I don't. So I, I find that 32 gigabyte is more than adequate, and they're so inexpensive anymore to buy that you can buy multiples and have backups. It also has a port for uh, micro USB, so you can plug it in and charge it. The battery goes in this little battery door here, so you can just plug it in and it'll charge right in the camera. It has the power button to turn it on. It has the power button, the record button on top, and then these two toggles on the side. You can see them there that you scroll through the menu for your settings. And it's the screen is you can see the screen there. It's a very good size screen. The menu is very intuitive. It's very easy to scroll through. There's the power button showing that it's on. The little blue light. Here comes the screen. Cam park. There it shows, it's looking at what I'm filming right now. You can kind of see it through the camera. So what I want to do to get to the menu is, on the front I have the power button. So if I click one, two, three, four. Now there's the settings. So to go through the settings, I push the power button one more time. Oh, sorry, I messed up. There's the settings. I can scroll through. That comes in. It's hard to see. It's so bright. But you have all your settings for the camera, for still photography. This has Wi-Fi enabled, so I can turn on the Wi-Fi and link it to either my iPhone here or my iPad, and I can use that as a bigger viewfinder or monitor. This is uh, different settings for the camera, how you can set your, your different parameters, and then you X out of the menu. So there's the, I'm trying to get this in focus so you can see it, that yellow is so bright. So there's for the photograph, there's the Wi-Fi. Now I would toggle down, I would use these toggles down here, Wi-Fi, and then hit the OK on top, and it would turn on the Wi-Fi and then link to either my iPad or my phone. Um, and then I push the power button to go through again. It has, you can set your date and time. This is to format the card when, when you first put it in. You can reset the factory settings. And for your firmware, the camera's firmware update, you can do that. One more time, and then if I hit OK, I'm out of the menu and I'm ready to record. So it's a very good little camera. I really like it. The footage that I filmed for the intro to my videos on YouTube was filmed on this camera. So you can see the quality. Um, I have edited it so it looks like old time film, but the quality of the video is, is very good. Now this, it comes with this little uh, hard shell case for underwater or wet conditions or muddy conditions. I got some mud on it today because I was filming with it outside of the vehicle. So this just pops open. And it has a really good seal in the back. I've submerged this in water to test it, and it works great. No leaks at all. Pop the camera in there. Clip this, just like a GoPro. And then you have your button. So there's the power button. There's the record button. There's your toggles for up and down in the menu or for zooming. So And they work very easily. It's very easy to push. You can see this covers the lens and protects it. And there you can still see the screen from the back. Now this does not have an accessory dongle for hooking in a microphone. 
you can record uh, audio on this, but the microphone is sketchy at best. I just use this for a video that I want no audio with. Um, I'm not looking to record audio. If it was a GoPro, maybe. I am thinking about getting a GoPro be just because I like the GoPro Hero 7. I, everything about it, I've, I've looked at them, I've played around with them. They're great little cameras, and I'm thinking about going to a GoPro because you don't need this little suitcase for it. They're waterproof off the get-go. They have a very nice lens. Um, it's not that old fisheye like the old ones uh, are, and it works really well. So I am considering a GoPro Hero 7, but I will keep this and maybe add a few more for doing time lapses outside of the vehicle or places where if I set this down and it, you know, something happens to it, I'm not out $400, I'm only out $55. Uh, you could have four of these, like I said, for a little over $200, and you could put them around and do different, different types of filming with them and get some great footage that you could use in your videos if you so choose to do YouTube videos and post them. Or even if you want to just shoot video for yourself and your family, these are great little action cameras to have. Keep them in your pocket. They weigh next to nothing. They're mere ounces. And they uh, take they take great video. So you can t I can attest to that. And you can tell by the video that you've seen me film and put up on my channel where I've used this. One of the next things I use with my iPhone is an external microphone. And this is the Rode Video Micro. And it's a really nice little microphone. You can see how small it is. It's the length of my fingers right there. You see that? It has a shock mount, so you don't, if, you know, if you're moving around, it doesn't get a lot of noise. Um, the Rode themselves come with what's called a Rycoat mount, which is like this, but it's red. The red mounts, the same color red as this cord. This is an aftermarket because I, I purchased this off of uh, Facebook from a gentleman that had it for sale for $15. And that's all it was, was just the microphone and the, the original cord. He did not have the, the mount or anything else, but it did not have a windscreen. This is what's called a dead cat because it looks like a cat. And it has a hole here in the middle. And what you do is you slide this over and it lock. you'll hear a little click and it locks in place and it goes in the mount. You then can loosen this and any, any hot shoe that you have on any camera, this will slide into the hot shoe, tighten down. And then what you do is you take your cord and you'll see these little detents here. You pop this into the detent and it holds the mic from bouncing around when you're filming, which is really nice. So this is, these are great little mics. And I have a second one, which I'm actually using right now with my iPhone. So I have two of these. The reason I have two is if I wanted to shoot an interview with somebody, uh, let's say, for instance, Camper Van Kevin, if I wanted to shoot an interview with him or Jamie from Enigmatic Nomadics, I can face this one forward facing them so you get good, clear audio. And I face the other one facing back to me so you can hear me as well. So you get both sides of the conversation on the video. They're nice and clear, good audio. Audio is very important. So you want to make sure that you have a good microphone, uh, accessory microphone to plug into your camera or smartphone or whatever you have that will record uh, nicely for you. And the cord that comes with these is like this. It has, it has three sections, the tip, the ring, and the, and the bottom. This is called a TRS cord. This I use, on, I can use on my regular video camera, my Canon Vixia video camera. But for the uh, iPhone, there's another ring in here. So there's four rings. So it's called a TRRS cord. And you need the TRRS to work with an iPhone because of the way their phone jack is, which I'll show you here in a second. You have to be able to adapt from this into the iPhone. And this TRS won't work. You need a TRRS. And I can go more into depth on that in another video. I just wanted to kind of show you, so giving you an overview. But it does come with this cord, and you can get the other one uh, from Rode, which are a little more money, or you can get an aftermarket, which work just as well, but they're a little less expensive. Uh, but they're same color and everything. 
and they work very well. So that's the Rode Video Micro. Next thing I have is this little case here. And this is Five Star Prime. That's who it comes from. I got this was uh, I got it for Christmas off of Amazon. It was a, one of my wish lists for Christmas. And there's the desiccant pack. This is an accessory set of lenses that I can clip onto my iPhone. And this is a wide angle lens and it clips on to the camera either the front facing or rear facing camera and I can expand my view if I need to and get some wider shots so if I had two people it would work good for that it has also some extra lenses for uh, telephoto and macro and then it has some filters so, so if you have bright sun or whatever you can filter it out it has a star what they call a starlight filter so there's various filters in here that i can put on and use if i choose to these are some extra mounts for mounting these lenses onto this holder and here is a short little lightning cord i do have an external battery pack that i can plug in if i need to extend the bat the life of my bat phone battery for recording uh, i don't have to do that very often but when i do i like to have the uh, the battery pack for doing that this also comes with a carabiner in it that you can clip on to the little loop here. If you want to hang it on a backpack or your belt or whatever, you can run the carabiner through there. I don't choose to do that. It does have a lens cleaning cloth in here for wiping the lenses if they get dirty. I, these are the accessory rings to mount the accessory lenses and filters onto the lens holder. And then I have this, this is a little adapter. Now this, this is the, see here, TRRS adapter. This is the four section adapter. The other one I showed you was three. I have two cases on my phone. I, right now I, I'm running a life proof, waterproof case on my phone, but I also have a water resistant, dust proof, military grade aluminum case that I sometimes will use and if I'm not around water, I kind of take the waterproof case off. I just use this mainly in winter when I'm around snow, if I drop in the snow, or if I'm around, if I'm, uh, saying canoeing or kayaking, I definitely am going to have the waterproof case. I have a float that goes on it, so if I drop it, it won't sink. The float will hold it at the top. But this, for my other case, my military aluminum case, this you have to have this adapter for the to plug in the microphone. Uh, now, the LifeProof case comes with what's called a dongle, and it's a little adapter that has a little piece of uh, plastic in between where the wires run. It's flexible, and it has to screw in to the LifeProof and seal so that no water gets in when I'm using it. But it's the same thing. So it adapts this cord from a TRRS to a TRS on this side. So it's a TRRS male to a TRS female, and then what I do is I can plug in this cord to this adapter and use it with my iPhone. Or you could use it you know, with a Samsung or whatever smartphone you have. They're all set up with the TRRS on the one end and then have to come out to a TRS to plug into the microphone itself. So I, I keep that little adapter in the case with all of my accessory lenses and whatnot. So I, I know I always have it with me. And the dongle that I'm using on my LifeProof case right now, it stays attached to the microphone that's on the stand that I'm using. And I'll show you that a little later on. One of the other things that I got, and I got two of these. I'm using one right now. So I'm going to show you the other one. Uh, let's see. Let's open it. Yes, this is the open end. So I figured I would show you these. I have not taken this one out. I did take the first one because I needed to use it. Every Everybody that does film or photography has the ubiquitous tripod, the big tripods that you can set up and take pictures. And those are great. I have, I have many tripods, but they're not that, um, they're quite cumbersome to carry. Let me say it that way. They're not portable as you would think. This is a little portable base that opens to a tripod. 
and it can be used as a handle. It has rubber here, so you can it, you can grip it and it won't slip out of your hand. It has rubber on the in, inside, so if you set it on any kind of a delicate surface, it won't scratch, it'll hold and not move around. But what I really like about this is a lot of times I shoot with this doing time lapses and I don't have any way to hold it in place. So I gotta rig something. Well, with this, I can screw this base on. And one of the things I really like is this handle is okay, but it's kind of small. It's, it's kind of skinny for my hand. I like a beefier grip, which I have with this. So now I have an extra grip that also extends it a little bit. I can set this up, aim my camera to what I want to time lapse, turn it on, and just let it go. When I'm done, I just fold up the bottom. I have my handle, and I can stow it in my pack or whatever I'm carrying, and away I go. That's, just, that's why I got two of them, because on the base of the grip that I use for my iPhone, I have it set right now so that I can do this tabletop review. I have done tabletop reviews before where I've had to set up my big tripod and try to work around it. It's cumbersome, it's in the way, and it, it's hard to get to the products that I wanna show because I have to try to reach around and do it. So this just makes it a whole lot easier. And I'll show you this uh, setup. I'll put in a photo and show you the setup and show you how it works and how nice it is to have it. It also extends the grip of my other handle, so it gives me a little extra uh, length if I want to hold the camera out a little bit further. And then this. This is the Ulanzi Select, a W49 LED. So it, it has a 7x7, seven seven, which is 49 LEDs. It's a mini LED video light. And I'll show you what I really like about this right now. So here we're going to unbox it. Let's uh, tape. Yeah, there's the tape. Get the tape undone. Slide it out. Now this is a very compact little light. And for a smartphone holder, this is really nice. I have a bigger uh, video light that I'll show you here in a minute. That's about double this size. But this one's really nice. And there's some, there's some bonus features to this that I really like. So it has the, this is what's called a cold shoe mount. You unscrew the collar, you slide it into your camera's hot shoe or cold shoe, and then you tighten the collar down and it holds it in place. Now, one of the benefits of this, this has a dimmer switch. I don't have any batteries in it yet. I'll put those in in a minute. But it has three accessory shoe mounts. So what that means is I can take my Rode microphone here, and I can slide it into the the cold shoe. Now this is a cold, these are cold shoes because there's no, a hot shoe is something that will operate off of your camera. It has contacts in there, like a flash or a, a video light that has uh, hot contacts so that it runs off the battery of the camera instead of uh, separate batteries. But I can mount this right here, tighten it down. And now I have my microphone mounted on top of my light. Pop the cord in there so it holds it. Well, that one's not going to hold for some reason. Let's see about this one. There we go. And I can mount another microphone, which like I said, I like to have one microphone facing forward to a subject I might be interviewing, and I can have one facing backward. And I can also, if I want, I could get another one of these lights mount on the side so I have double the brightness now in a compact design. So that was one of the things that intrigued me with this light was the fact that it had these three accessory cold shoe mounts that I could add other accessories if I need on to it. So let's see, here it takes two double A's. And I have some brand new Duracells. Now, for electronics, I only use the red Duracells because they last the longest, especially these little LED lights. Uh, they just outlast the black and gold Duracells by quite a bit. Okay, it was on. I just clicked it off, put the battery cover. Now, you're going to see how bright this is going to get. So there, oh, look how bright that is just on. And then I dial it up. 
Look how bright that gets. That is that is every bit as bright as my video light that's double the size. With the advancement in LEDs, it's just amazing. So there you can see I can turn it down, it dims, and then it's off. On. Wait until it comes down. There it is at its lowest setting. And then I turn it brighter. And that will more than illuminate me if I was doing a vlog at night or in very low light. That is that is a very bright light for its size. That's I'm, I'm going to like that a whole lot better than my, than my other one that I have. Uh, just for comparison, let me drag this. I'll show you my other one. Okay. Let me turn this. Turn this off. Okay, there's my old one. Look at this difference in size. Now I'm going to turn this one on full brightness, and I'm going to turn this one on full brightness. They're they're pretty equal. They're pretty equal. And this is this takes six double A's, and this takes two double A's. So for the brightness factor, I really like this little light. I, I like it a lot. And this big one, uh, let me set this over here, a little backlighting. This big one does not have any kind of accessory mounts, shoe mounts. So, and you can see here, it takes six double A's, and these are the black ones. These don't last as long. This shows you your reading of how many you have left. I only have one left, and I, I've only used this two times and it's already draining the batteries down um, since I put them in. But it does have the cold mount, and it, it does, ang you know, you can tilt this up and down. Now, that's the only thing that this one doesn't have is, let me turn this off for a second and turn this one back on so it's not quite so dim. Now, this one doesn't have the swivel, but I can buy a little $5 swivel ball if I need it. But for on top of my iPhone, I don't need it to swivel because this is just going to be used to eliminate me or somebody that I might be filming. So I don't need it to be swiveling all around. I'm not going to be doing any uh, cast lighting or backlighting or anything of that nature. It's just going to be direct lighting. And I'll probably find some kind of a little bit better filter. Uh, what I like to use is wax paper because these don't get hot. So I put a little bit of wax paper to diffuse the light even a little more, make it a little softer light. But... There again, there you can see it. And it's lowest. And then I turn up the brightness. And it, that gets that gets really bright. So there you have it. I will show you some pictures of the stand that I'm using for my iPhone and how I uh, how I use it to film, uh, do vlogging and whatnot. And it works pretty well. I do have uh, a stable, what's called a stabilizer. It's not a, it's not an electronic stabilizer. It's a manual stabilizer. It's called a Steadicam. I've had it for a long time. They they work really well. I don't like the digital Steadicams. Um, people like Eric from Nomadic Fanatic use them. Ausia from Pandemonium uses a stabilizer. They're very expensive. The batteries can go bad or wear out, and you have to recharge them. So you can't. You can't film for a long time. The steady cam that I have, it's manual. It it works off of gyroscopes. I can film all day and not worry about batteries wearing out. I can film whatever I want and I can mount multiple cameras on that steady cam. When you buy a digital uh, stabilizer, you can only put like a GoPro or a phone or a DSLR. Um, you can't mount multiple different cameras. They, they have specific holders for your camera. So you have to buy one for your DSLR, You have to, and the other one you can buy that might work for your phone and a GoPro, but that's it. You can't put a DSLR on it. So you have to have multiple, and they can range up into the seven, eight hundred, nine hundred dollar range, even more than that. You can find some cheaper ones, but they're cheaper quality. They don't work as well. They don't balance as well. The steady cam you can balance no matter what. And at some point I will show you how I use it. I don't use it a lot anymore since I have this uh, handheld 
grip for my phone and I have the phone has relatively good stabilization built in and I can also add some stabilization in post production so I really don't need the steady cam that much but once in a while it's great to use if I'm going to be doing some fast action moving or things of that nature I, I use that so that adds an extra layer of stabilization to what my phone already has so if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below and I will try to answer them as best I can. I have links to all the products I use. The, uh, most all this stuff is available on uh, Amazon or you can find it on Craigslist. If you look under electronics and video stuff, you can find it there. Or the marketplace on Facebook, you can find a lot of these things. Like I said, I found this, this road video micro on the marketplace for 15 bucks so you can always find good deals um, i found some iphones i might get a second iphone so i can have what's called a b-roll camera so i might get a second iphone for filming b-roll uh, i'm not sure about that yet haven't decided but that is something that will most likely make its way into my repertoire of equipment so again if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below and if you want to know more about how to film or, or things of that nature, leave those down below or contact me at backroadsnomad at gmail.com and I'll be glad to answer your questions. So until next time, 